Okay, hello and welcome to the latest video about Castle Game Engine. So the topic of this video are two components, Tech Castle Design and Tech Castle Design Transform. Now their functionality, their use case is very similar. The idea is that you can design something visual that you will be able to later reuse multiple times. For example, imagine that you want to create a button that has some fancy them. Uh, and you want to reuse this button in multiple places of your game or imagine that you want to create some three-dimensional object that is maybe a composition of some existing three-dimensional objects and you want to like put it inside the box that you will be able to later reuse multiple times throughout your game. So this is like the functionality that we offer to our Castle Design and Castle Transform Design components. Um, if you come from the Unity background, a very similar um, use case in very similar use case in Unity is covered by what is called prefab in Unity. Okay, so prefab in Unity is kind of something very similar to what I'm describing here, which is the Castle Design and the Castle Design Transform components. Okay. So let's get into a presentation. Let's see how to actually use them. Okay, so I'm going to create an empty project. Um, it's, it's another empty project in my case. Let's start with uh, empty user interface design that is by default created for us in an empty project from the empty project template. Uh, by default, it's kind of boring. It just has an empty group and a label that is going to be filled at runtime with the frames per second information. Now imagine that this is like a bigger game code and design, okay? So imagine that I have here now a second state that maybe represents the actual game, okay? So game, state, play, I'm creating a new state, okay? So now in my game I have two states with two user interface designs. This is the state that represents my game, whatever happens I will put like in the core game I want to put in the game state play and I have another state called game state main that for example it represents like initial main menu that I want to show to users to for example load game, save game, quit game, go to options and so on and so on. Um, okay, so I want now to create a component that I will be able to reuse in multiple designs in multiple places of those designs, okay? So let's first start by creating some fancy button. Now, the way you would usually create a button, uh, like if you want to like directly create a button on your design, is to go on to, on your, in your hierarchy, uh, click with the right mouse button, use add user interface and button, okay? And we can actually go with this, okay? So let's actually start designing button like this and later we will like turn this button into reusable component okay so first let's just start to create a button as if you would create a regular button on your design so this is our button um that's <laughs> nothing fancy right let's uh, turn off auto sizing here mm, let's customize it a bit i actually have some fancy graphics that I downloaded from Open Game Mart. Let's try to use it, okay? So let's try to create some, um, just for the demonstration purposes, like some button with a fancy then, okay? So now I have uh, two images that I want to put in my project. Where they are? Well, like this, okay? So this is one image and this is another image. Let's just use them to play around, okay? Now I place those images into the data folder of my project, so I will be able to actually use them uh, for my design. So let's now customize the button so that it actually uses those images to show well some fancy stuff, okay? So let's go to the all tab on my button. Let's, oh, let me move myself. So let's select the custom background checkbox. And now let's customize the way that the background looks in case of disabled, uh, focused, normal and pressed versions of my button, okay? And the way we are going to customize it, it's very easy. Let's just assign the URL to point to our newly used images, okay? So we'll just use this image and now I'm going to select it, Control A, Control C and paste this URL into the remaining states, okay? Because I just want to use this image of a shovel in all states of the button, okay? 
So that's how you would create a button that actually looks like an image. Uh, let's actually assign some colors so that you will be able to see when the button is focused, so under the mouse cursor, and when it is pressed. Okay, so let's customize those colors a little bit. So this is the pressed state of the button. Let's customize it with uh, something, okay? Anything that isn't white, just so that we can see that something is happening, okay? Um, let's make it bluish, okay? So this is our amazing button. I can add the blue, which is actually too strong, okay? Give me a second. Let's make it a light blue, okay? So this is our button. So when I hover over it, it gets bluish. When I press it, it should change the color to something else. To test it, we can actually go to the interact mode, okay? So now I'm going to test pressing on this button, okay? Amazing, colors change as they were supposed to, okay? So this is our button. Mm, let's customize it a bit more, okay? I want to also change the color of the text here, this button one caption, because it's a bit not visible at this point. Okay, let's make it like this. And let's also add some child to this button. For example, some additional label. Uh, let's move it here. Let's make it larger. Much larger, okay? Let's give you, for example, let's say that this button is supposed to be to buy a shovel, okay? And it costs 144 gold pieces, okay? The color of it, I guess, should be something that is actually visible. So let's go like this, well, let's go like this, okay? So that's our amazing button, okay? It's, um, I know it's still a silly demo, okay? But the point here is that we now have something that we are, uh, that we want to reuse multiple times in our design. Uh, so how, uh, in, in multiple designs, okay? So how do we go about that? Well, now I can press right click on this button and I can press save selected. Okay, and now I can say, okay, so it's my button, okay? And now I actually, let me move myself. Now I can double click on the my button design. Uh, I can do whatever here. So I can click on the my button design. And as you can see, this is a user interface design that just contains as a root component, this button, and the label as a child, okay? And now here, I can go back to the game state main menu. I didn't save it, so that's why it actually doesn't even contain the button that I have designed. And now I want to add this button in a way that I will be able to like reuse this button multiple times. So the easiest way to do it is just to click and drag and drop this button over my user interface design. And it works like this. And don't worry that the size of this button by default, like it got small, right? If you want to like, because by default, the castle design component that we have just created by drag and dropping. So this castle design component by default has the stretch property set to true. It looks weird, but it's actually useful because this way I can just, oh sorry, because this way I can just drag this component and I can resize it, okay? So like each instance of this design, well, it can actually have a bit different size. If you really, really don't want it, that you can just unclick the stretch. And now it completely doesn't matter what is the size of this design component because the size of the actual button is the same. I kind of recommend you to actually follow this stretch through default because, as I say, it's just much more functional, okay? So this way you can like resize each instance of your component as you like. And now you can, of course, duplicate this component. Well, we could have done it with the regular button too, but we can also do this with the castle design, okay? So Control D, Control D, and I have multiple, uh, multiple such weird buttons on my design. Of course, for example, I could just place them into something um, that makes them look good. For example, let's place them all in a horizontal group. So like this, and now I have a set of three buttons in a horizontal group. Okay, amazing. So that's my design. Now. As you can see, those buttons here, they are not even visible as T-Castle button components. And we don't even see here the label that is actually the cost 144 gold. So we don't even see in the hierarchy 
those labels that are children of those components. Uh, because what we just see is a, like a black box, well, not really a black box, but it's just a box that says it is a design that comes from the mybutton.cast user interface file. And this is what you are using here, okay? Mm. So this is how we have like placed this button on our design. And now th the idea of it is that of course I can go to other designs, for example, game state play, and I can do the same, okay? So maybe I want to place the buttons here too, okay? I, I don't know, let's for example here make them in a vertical group, okay? Just to make things interesting, okay? And now control D, control D, and it's, I guess, too much without even see that. <laughs> At the top. Okay, so this is my game state play, where I, where I have placed three buttons in a vertical group. And in game state play, I have those three buttons in a horizontal group. Now, the kind of point of all of this, uh, because well, so far what I have done, I could have also achieved without the castle design uh, component, right? Because, well, I could have just, you know, designed those buttons here, I, I, I could have designed them here, then I could have, you know, just duplicate them. I can duplicate components using uh, this many options. I can also copy and paste components between two designs using the copy and paste. It works, like, ac across designs. I can copy the component from one design, I can go to another design, and I can paste it there, okay? So, well, what is the gain that we have done it like this way, this my button cast user interface? Well, the gain is that now I can change this component, I can change this design, and it will be reflected everywhere where I have placed my fancy button, okay? So, uh, what should we do? Well, for example, let's change the color of this text uh, to something like that. Mm, let's actually do something more drastic, okay? I want to like to really, really change the look of this button so that it's clearly visible that it's a completely different button, okay? Let me go to the custom background press, change the URL, Let's choose the other image, okay? Like this image. Now Ctrl A, Ctrl C. Let me use this. Oh, no color background. Let me use this image for all the remaining states of this button. Okay, like this, like this, and like this. This was all that good. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, okay. Everything is alright. Yeah, I changed it four times, okay? So this is my new button that looks like this. And just to be fancy, let's actually add also here a new component. So let's add here a new image inside my button. Let's make this new image actually point to this icon, okay? And now let's make it centered like this. And we don't even anymore want to see the caption of it. Mm, let's place this label on top. Okay, so like this. And this is my new fancy button. So as you can see, it's like it's something completely different, right? I mean, the button has a different look. I have also added a new component here, and I have actually rearranged some existing stuff, and it's going to work. I mean, now I'm going to save this design, and now I'm going to open, and now I'm going to open game state play. And as you can see, it now reflects uh, the changes that I have done in my design. Same goes for the game state main. Now it shows three times of my new button. From code, I mean, this, those components, those three buttons, just to emphasize, they look the same at the design time right now. Uh, but from code, I am st they are still like internal. They are still like three different instances of those of this design, which means that from code, for example, if I would actually like to show here, for example, that this cost is 100 and this cost is 200 and this is 300, I can still do it. Like from code, I can access this design and inside this design, I can find the children components here including those labels, and I can still change them independent and independently from code, okay? So this is like still totally flexible from the code. However, from the visual perspective, you just reuse the same existing component multiple times. And as you can see, it can be quite useful. Um, okay, what's more? Well, first of all, uh, this was like, I guess, the way I have done it, 
is I have created a button here and then I use the save selected, okay? This is actually not the only way to go uh, around it, about it. Uh, the other way to create such a button, such design with a button, is to choose design, new user interface, custom root, button, okay? And now it starts like this. So now I immediately start with a design that has as a root just an empty button. And again, I could just, you know, go ahead, customize it, and do with it whatever I like, and later, you know, press and save it like my button too, okay? So this is like an alternative way to start designing such reusable button, okay? And now again, I can go with, and I can just drag my button to here on the design, and this is design of my button too. It looks boring because I didn't actually customize it. It's actually pretty much equivalent to the default button, yeah, but I could have customized it. So, okay, so that's like alternative way of creating a design that contains this button. Uh, another, if we're talking about alternatives, so another way also to uh, instantiate such design. The way I have done so far is just drag and dropping. So I drag and drop this button over my design. There it is, I can use it. A another way, a bit more manual, but it's actually, I think, helpful to see it, to kind of understand what is going on, is that I can add user interface. Uh, that is a design, okay? And this, is, this has created a tcastle design component or in my user interface design. And now by default, the URL of this is empty. But of course, I can customize it. So I can point the URL of it to, uh, uh, what do we want? Let's say this button, okay? And this is how you can create a design of this button this way. Drag and dropping is just a comfortable shortcut to perform the same thing. So it adds the component, the custom design, and it sets the URL of this component well, to whatever you have dragged, okay? Um, so those are like two ways how you can, uh, well, Though this has been like alternative way of creating such component, an alternative way of instantiating such component. Um, okay, so what more can we do here? So if you go and right click on one of those designs, you will see some interesting options. I guess the one that is most self-explanatory is just open reference design. Uh, so instead of, you know, double clicking on my button here, you can just click open reference design and it will do the same thing, so it will just open the design you have made. It's kind of handy when you have, well, multiple such things on your design. Um, okay, now the other two are, I guess, less self-explanatory, or maybe they are, but in any case, they are more interesting, I think. So edit and copy here reference design. So this is a way how you can, instead of actually referencing this design and not being able to modify it, well, instead, once I press this edit, then you are actually then you actually see the components inside and you can actually edit them as you would like. You can do anything here. As you can see, like the look here, it didn't change at all. Because actually nothing internal changed. You still see the same components. But now instead of referencing them in a way that like is impossible for you to make changes. Now you just have a copy of them and you can do with them well whatever you like. So for example, I can delete this label and I can add here... Uh, what can I add here? Well, let's add something crazy. If I don't know what to do, then always do something crazy. So let's go ahead, make this thing and make... Uh, yeah, for example, let's make a second image that references this shovel. So, for example, like this, like this, oh, sorry, I wanted to choose this one. Okay, so now I have a second image that is referencing this shovel. Uh, let's actually make it stretch. And for example, let's duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it. Okay, so this is why, like, essentially a new version of this component, okay? And now this is no longer associated with the or, uh, original design, with the mybutton.castle user interface. Uh, yes, even if you would, so for example, if I will now save it, and now I will do some change here, for example, instead of gold 144, I will write here gold 
145 or well, I will do whatever other change here because I didn't even for example let's change the color of this thing uh, let's change the color custom background normal to something that uh, stands out okay so let's make it yellowish okay so my button is now yellowish now if i go to game state main as you can see those two things they have changed to be yellow when in their normal state when the mouse is not hovering over them this one it remained as it was because it's no longer associated with the original design mm, and that's it's kind of a feature Okay, so if you would, for example, compare it with Unity prefabs, they have this a bit, uh, let's say, complicated system that if you make modifications in an instance of a prefab, they kind of override some specific properties of the prefab, but you are still associated with the original prefab. So those modifications are like stored as a difference between the original prefab. Here, at least for now, we have a bit simpler system. When you are editing it, what you have actually done is you have like broken the association between the original design and what you are doing now. So you just have a copy now and you can edit it as much as you wish. You can still revert it to the original design. This will what will, what will happen if I press this? It will actually set the URL back to what it was when you started editing. It's actually storing this value when you started editing in a special revert URL property. So I can go back, I can press revert, and that's what happens. So reverting brings back the association of my design with the original design file, my button.custom user interface, and I can like, you know, repeat this process as I like. So I can edit it again, maybe here again, I will change it, some, I, I will do something crazy here. And then again, if I don't like it, I can just, you know, revert it and I can do it as I like. Um, okay, so this is like the edit and the revert feature. So th the way you usually work is, you know, you press the edit and well, if you don't like it, then you press revert and you can uh, repeat this if you like. Um, okay, so those are like the basic features of our T Castle design component. And that's actually, I think, everything I wanted to tell about the Castle design component. Now let's see how it all compares, because it's actually extremely similar to another component, the Castle design transform, which is a way to reuse a three-dimensional, well, generally anything that you can place in a viewport. So it's a way to reuse anything that you can place in a viewport. And let's see how it works. Okay, so uh, let me actually go to game state play. Let's say that I don't want those buttons anymore. Let's add here a user interface. It's going to be a viewport 3D. Mm, so I actually have downloaded from Sketchfab all this nice car model. Okay, well, let's try to use it. I have downloaded it as a GLTF file. I used it in the past uh, as a screenshot from one of our news. So I'm pretty sure that it will work nicely. Let's take the GLTF file of it. Okay. So I have those two things. Those two things, scene.bin and scene.gltf. Okay, and we are, they are visible here. Let me double click them. This is how it looks. Uh, the textures didn't open properly. Oh yeah, that's my mistake because I did not copy them. So let's paste the textures as well. Let's double click scene.gltf again. And now this is how it looks. Okay, that's better. And uh, now let's place it in our scene. Now let's wrap it in some interesting t castle transform thing that we will be able to later reuse multiple times. So I'm just drag and dropping the scene.gltf on my design. Okay, and that's how it works that's how it looks in the end okay so that's one instance of my car uh, to make it nicely lit of course i can adjust the lighting here and maybe even so so one thing that we can do okay let's let's say that okay this is my one the castle scene let's create a whole transformation hierarchy that will actually contain this scene and some other nice let's say fancy stuff okay so we have here the scene let's add here the lighting okay so this lighting will shine 
and let's set up this lighting oh, in a way that makes some sense yeah, like this and shines nicely on my model actually let's add another one okay let's add a spotlight here so let's add a spotlight that will make our car nicely lit from the side okay so let's rotate it like this let's make it a little bit lower okay let's increase the intensity just to make sure it works so it works and let's adjust the color just to show that well we have actually you know done something okay so what i have now done is i have set up the spotlight to make a nice like bluish uh, tint on the right side of the car and just to be crazy let's also add something and just some new three-dimensional object here yeah? so this is a box let's move this box underneath the car i actually don't want this plane anymore it gets in the way Okay, so let's move a box, so let's move a box, and uh, let's actually make it size 1, uh, so like 10, 1, 10, so it's a very flat box, like this, okay? Eh, I don't like it, let's make it 2, 0, 1, 2, okay, so something smaller. Because as you can see, this uh, car it actually has like a fake shadow underneath the drone, so I think it will look a bit better if I place it on some mm, fake floor. <laughs> okay, so let's say that this is our great design of a car, and now we would like to reuse it multiple times. So now I can do the same thing that I've done with my buttons, right? So I can do save selected. I can say that okay, this is a car, and it will be saved as a field with the, the extension dot custom transform by default, and that's good. Uh, let's make it my car, okay? And okay, now if we go and open my car design, it looks like this, okay? So now I, I no longer actually even see the viewport, although there is some internal viewport created in this case but I don't really design a viewport here. What I'm editing here is just the hierarchy under T Castle Transform that I have designed. And this hierarchy contains a scene with my car, two lights, and a box, which, well, it's kind of like a floor, so let's call it a floor in this case, okay? Uh, so that's my new design, okay? Now let's go back to the T Castle State Play. I have here still my original transformation, I actually no longer want it yeah, because, I, as you can guess, I will actually want to use my uh, well, my component, my car dot cast to transform. Uh, so let's just delete it and let's place here my car again. Like I can do it in two ways. I can do add transformation and from here I can choose transform design and then set the URL to my car dot cast to transform. Ah, but that's a bit tiresome, yeah? so let's actually not do it because it's much easier to just drag and drop my car dot cast to transform on a scene and it appears, okay? And now as you can guess, well, I can do it multiple times. So let's get another, let's get another, yeah? So now I have three designs of my car. As you can see, they all of them have their lights, all of them have two lights, point light and spotlight. In this case, those lights actually affect each other too. So this lighting from this design, it actually shines everywhere. Uh, we could kind of play around with it if you go into the, some, some settings of the lighting that they don't need to have a global scope. But in this case, let's just leave all those lights to have a global scope. Actually, you can limit also radius of this light. So uh, you can fight with it if you would like to, so that those lights affect only some local scope only their particular uh, cars but in this simple example let's not okay uh, let's just you know look at uh, the fact that well all those cars have their own lighting and uh, what? Uh, i can now duplicate them as many times as i would like to i can save the scene and i can also try to do something a bit more uh, sensible instead of a silly 
demo, for example, let's make a large plane on which we will just place all of them. Yellowish, let's make it yellowish, okay. And let's actually make them lower. As you can see, like their initial origin is a bit lower. So this is like the pivot, the origin of this transform that I have created. Why it's kind of it's kind of counterintuitive because the original, well, the scene and the lights, they have been moved from the origin. If I would like to, I could uh, well work around it. I mean, I could fix it. How? Well, let me save this design. Let's go to edit my car dot transform, and let's here observe the same thing. Yeah. So the origin of this transformation of this root transformation. Well, it's kind of uh, shifted compared to well what we have here. Okay, so let's just move the things to actually be at a proper place. So like this, like this, like this. We should have in the future uh, a way to actually move multiple 3D things simultaneously. Uh, it's not there yet. Okay, so that's why I'm kind of doing it by hand. I'm like repeating four times more or less the same action. Yeah. So this should be improved in the future. Okay, so that's how it works now. And now my car, this whole setup with the lighting and my car, is kind of more well centered around the zero zero point. Okay, okay. So let's save it. Let's open the game state play again. And now it's a bit more kind, bit more intuitive, yeah. Because now if I drag the design, the origin of it is more in the middle of my uh, of my car okay so i can for example go ahead and i can position those things on my plane i don't really have a big plan of what to do sensibly here just notice that i can of course still duplicate it multiple times so i can like do ctrl d and now i have another design and Ctrl T to have another, and really I can do it. Oh, so that's a plane. And really I can just do this do the duplication as many times as I would like to, and I can have essentially as crazy design as I would like to. And um, okay, so what can we do here more? Well, we can do the same things that we have done mm, with the button. So we can edit reference design here, so it will look like this. Okay, so now this design. It's this particular car. It's kind of expanded, so I can actually edit the details here. For example, uh, maybe I don't want the spotlight here anymore. Maybe I want the point like here to have a smaller intensity. Maybe I want the floor here to, for example, be uh, red instead of white. Okay, so that's my edited design of this one particular car. And I can, if I like to, I can leave it as that, as it is right now. Or if I don't like it, I can of course revert it to the reference design. And now, yeah, it kind of reverted back to what we have designed in my car dot castle transform. And uh, that's actually the simple demo of my car t castle transform design component. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it kind of works in a very similar way to the T-Castle design. Uh, but what more? Well, just a notion that you can actually wrap bigger stuff here in your own designs. And it also works if you have one design inside another design. Uh, so what am I aiming here? Well, you can actually wrap a whole component, sorry, a whole viewport inside another design. A viewport in Castle Game Engine is, as I think I, I said in, at multiple places, a viewport is just another user interface design. So sure, you can just put a viewport inside as a separate reusable component. And let's do it. Yeah? So let's save select it. Let's call it my viewport. Everything is mine in this example. So that's my viewport, and let's actually delete this instance of it, okay? So let's go back to the boring uh, initial setup, okay? So now I have my viewport.castle user interface, and I can reuse this my viewport, okay? So let's place this my viewport on my user interface. But at the beginning, it's small just because it's adjusted, because of the stretch property, it's adjusted to the size of the T-Castle design. I can make it larger if I want to. 
And yeah, I mean, it's not an image. It's still, uh, it's still really a three-dimensional space. Those things are still like well, regular 3D. I can m move inside them. Yeah, and I can make them. I can use it multiple times, of course. So, for example, let's go this. Let's go this. And now I have a window with three viewports. Um, to see them at once is no longer so easy. Yeah, but I can do like this. I can grab this thing. Oh. Let's actually even anchor this thing. Okay, again. Oh, anchoring is a good idea. Let's place you here. And in a fooling around, yeah. So the point here is that I have three user interface designs, three viewports. They all just take their contents from my viewport dot castle user interface. And you, as you have seen like, like a minute ago, actually this viewport it also references another design, the castle transform design of a car, and it kind of all works. If I would change now, for example, the car. Uh, for example, I want to make the floor uh, green everywhere. Okay, so let's choose green. It's the easiest way for me to choose green. Okay, the floor is green now. Okay, let's save it and let's load the game state play, which references three viewports and each of those viewports references five cars. Well, design of a car at once. And as you can see, it works. Like All those cars now have a green floor because they kind of use the same design under the hood. Okay. And so that's it, yeah. And uh, I could like go and repeat here what I shown like two times. So I can also I can still uh, go ahead and edit this viewport. I can uh, revert it later. I can open the file this way. It all works. Uh, okay, so that's actually it. That's what I wanted to show about the Castle design and the Castle transform design. To make a quick recap, you can like use them. You can place a component inside the file this way and you can reuse this component multiple times. And you can reuse user interface things or you can reuse transform things, which can be three-dimensional things. You can reuse those compositions multiple times and you can still kind of edit and revert them and so this still works. And uh, I think this is like a nice feature to kind of have components that are, well, that you can use multiple times in your in your visual design and then you can kind of make your game more consistent you can use something multiple times here multiple times there and it all will look and work the same okay and that's it thank you thank you very much for listening thank you